Well, Labor Day in the United States uh, just happened um, a few days ago, and that is traditionally the kickoff, the official, or I should say semi-official, kickoff of presidential camp, of actually of all election years. Most election campaigning in America starts after Labor Day, early September, for elections which are in the first week of November. And so now our two presidential campaigns, not to mention Senate campaigns, House of Representatives here and there, governors, city councils, et cetera, et cetera, are underway. But particularly the campaign between Donald Trump, uh, who is the nominee of the Republican Party, and Hillary Clinton, who's the nominee of the Democrat Party. Um, and this is a campaign which has drawn a lot of attention from Americans and people around the world. Um, I think attention which in many cases is, is either centered on worry, or it's tinged on worry, or it's tinged on dissatisfaction. It is a historical fact, I think, that both candidates of the major parties have the highest negative ratings of, of any candidates uh, in the history of, of, of the United States. Uh, I think they're both in about 60% of the American people of Masomanus don't like them, don't trust them, uh, are fearful of them, something like that. Uh, which means this is a very interesting uh, exercise in democracy and popular government and constitutional government. The Co Roundtable was suggested a number of years ago that ethics ought to apply to governments. Uh, external standards of, of some sense of justice or morality or higher calling should apply to the use of power by governments uh, for quote unquote the public good as it should apply to private power uh, in owners of, of wealth, of owners of companies, and in managers of companies and in people who work for companies. The, the, the first principle that we suggested for government, for politics and politicians, is the concept of a public office, which is a public trust. That somehow, if you, if you are in government, if you seek a government position, you should be uh, in a frame of mind of serving other people. Uh, you are a trustee for power to help other people, to help the common good uh, in some way. The second thing that seemed to flow from that uh, notion of being a trustee not there for yourself, is that you need to engage in process and discourse. Um, a just politics, a, a trustee is not someone who imposes through violence or force of arms or manipulation or corruption his or her personal preferences on other people. There has to be some notion of, of jointness, of mutuality, of reciprocity, of interdependence, of a, of a dialogue, uh, discourse, discourse ethics apply. And I think in the idealism, uh, the morality of discourse ethics, there's one, there's one central point, which is to try to get as much to the truth as you can. Factual truth, uh, analytical fairness. Now, we all know that all kinds of reasons blind us, limit our thinking, we, 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 we internalize a lot of stuff, our psychology takes over, our fears, our emotions, lack of understanding. Some people argue that actually maybe there is no truth, it's just what different people think and want to say. But the notion of, of discourse ethics means you got to try. You don't just sort of dump your prejudices out there. And here I think we can say from the perspective of the Co Roundtable um, that a disappointment can justly be registered about the performance of both Mr. Trump and uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has these issues of, it, when she was Secretary of State, of having a private server uh, which was apparently uh, intended to keep her correspondence um, out of discourse. She wanted privacy, she wanted secrecy. And the question arises, is that really what we expect from a powerful official involved in discourse? Isn't she under an obligation to disclose? If she's being held accountable to the public, doesn't the public need to know all the facts about what she did and who she met with and how much money was made here and there? Um, and we also know that uh, various attempts were made to withhold uh, particular documents. So that seems to be, again, a disappointment. With Mr. Trump, on the other hand, the disappointment, I think, that could be pointed to with fairness, with objectivity, is his, his style of discourse, his, his rhetorical style which is very sheet, a short burst. He became very famous for using tweets over Twitter, which are 140 characters, 140 letters. 
And that form of speaking doesn't allow you to refer to facts very much. It doesn't allow you to develop an argument. It doesn't allow you to take account of other people's perspectives and points of view. It's just sort of slamming right up front, coming out with, with some part of, of your ideas, which are generally based on emotion. It's an appeal to emotion. And the old phrase for that is kind of like demagoguery. You don't appeal to people's better natures. You don't appeal to the facts. You don't ask them to analyze with you arguments for, arguments against, what are the facts, what are the consequences, what are the implications. It doesn't reflect open-mindedness. And so I think we could sort of sadly conclude that the American presidential campaign is not living up to the, to the highest ethical uh, standards of a good democracy.